Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for the DailySheeple.com, and this is your news shot. I'm going to go to CNBC. Ah, they say fake news can be very dangerous, and events this year in Asia proved it. Hmm. It's funny, I could go back in time to, oh, the 40s, even the turn of the century, and show you how fake news has altered events that have really changed the landscape of the planet. I can show and highlight fake news campaigns that started in the late 19th century and continued until, from the efforts of those fake news operations, spawned a new country. That's right. Fake news actually brought about a new country. I'll get into that in a second. It says here, fake news influenced three violent political events in Asia this past year, emerging as a strategic weapon for civilians and state actors to deepen societal divisions. This is uh, just all of a sudden a new tool? Really? Operation Mockingbird? We don't have propaganda. Propaganda hasn't been around basically since the dawn of warfare that this stuff doesn't happen or take place, that all of a sudden this is news to people, that this happens on a widespread scale. I mean, we've been preaching about this for years and years. Myself and many others in the independent media, activists, everybody from, you know, just uh, talking about it around the water cooler at work, to prominent independent media personalities, even mainstream media personalities, have gone on to talk about just how corrupt and how co-opted mainstream media really is. And it's really a sad state of affairs. It says, from elections to Indo- in Indonesia to Myanmar, uh, Myanmar's Rodinga, uh, I'm sorry, Rohingya, crisis to the Philippine drug war, the spread of misinformation and disinformation has been used to bolster hate speech, stereotypes, and propaganda. Yes. By who? That's the question. And when you go back to the roots, you find out that it's the control freaks and governments that are pushing this narrative. Right? Big corporations that are pushing this narrative that says, wow, Look at this. If we could get civil unrest in Nigeria, why, this would plummet the price of any sort of new drilling sites or anything else, and we'd be able to buy them cheap. So let's do whatever we can to stoke the fires of rebellion in Nigeria so that we can go in and get this drilling site for pennies on the dollar. The same thing goes with mines over in Africa. If you want to get mines cheaper, very simple. Civil unrest, destabilize the government. Now we get cheap slave labor that we can put to work and we get this mine at a reduced cost. This happens all the time. That's just one very small way that fake news is used to profit big corporations and the powers that shouldn't be. Um, I find it interesting that CNBC likes to spin it so it bolsters hate speech, stereotypes, and propaganda? Absolutely. I got to tell you, the majority of people here, at least in the United States, don't buy into the hate speech and stereotypes and propaganda. They don't. They just don't. They don't want it. I mean, maybe the propaganda. But hate speech? Go to the grocery store, right? When all the stuff in Missouri was going on, all the, the police uh, brutality and everything else, and it was black versus white and everything else, When you went to the supermarket, when you went to do your everyday activities, did you run into just hordes of Black Lives Matter and all these people that just looked at you and looked down at you because you were white or anything else? No. You went about your merry way. You still said, hi, how you doing? They're still your neighbors. We're all neighbors at the end of the day, and we all got along. And this whole idea of being super sensitive is absolutely asinine, too. Now everybody gets butt hurt over the smallest things when, you know, for centuries, the adage was sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That you were born and raised knowing that you were going to be made fun of 
that you were going to run up against adversity and that if you did, don't let it bother you, just rise above it. Now, all of a sudden, people need safe spaces and we need all these other stuff because eh, I can't take it. Me. In Jakarta, charges of blasphemy against the governor fueled deliberately inaccurate stories about the politician that were disseminated in an effort to prevent him from winning re-election in April's gubernatorial race. Uh, are you serious? This dirty politics never happens? All of a sudden, this is news? Do I need to highlight what happened to Ron Paul in 2012? That guy had a lock. He had the Republican nomination locked. And they stole it from him. By lies in the media, by uh, changing the vote counts, manipulating things. I mean, it was a mass campaign. Are you telling me that it was because of us that that happened? No, we were fighting it. But it's fake news. Where does the fake news come from? Where does the civil unrest come from? Where does all of this stuff come from? My friends, it comes simply from the leaders in uh, corporate, in the corporate world, in the clandestine world, and in the world of politics and government. I mean, it's simply that. You and I just want to get along. You and I just want to live our lives. You and I don't have the ambition of these people that want nothing more than total control over the world and to see the world the way they want it based on their vision, their life experience. We don't want that. We don't want that. And because we don't want that, we try to provide a little bit of accountability and a little bit of opinion to get it out there to show just how fake these things are. So what do they do? Now they say, oh, it's this big problem. Well, CNBC, well, Associated Press, well, all you mainstream media morons, you could stop it tomorrow. Simply live by the two cardinal rules that they teach you in journalism school on the very first day. Rule number one. Always follow the truth because the truth is a story. Hmm. Seems simple enough to follow. Follow the truth. How often do we find, even in independent media, and this happens everywhere, how oftentimes we let personal biases get in the way of reporting on actual news and events. And it tends to skew things, right? Especially if we start letting in political bias. When we start letting in political bias, that is dangerous. You know, same thing with people that have religious biases. One thing that I try to do whenever, when I started embarking upon this, especially over the last two years, is I've stopped associating myself with different, you know, political ideologies and all this kind of stuff. That's not to say I don't buy into some or some portions of it, but it doesn't become part of my personal identity where it would cause a bias. All right. Even even my spiritual beliefs, you know, people know out there that I believe that the Bible is the most accurate collection of writings from a historic standpoint. That go back to thousands of years B.C. that have been verified over and over again. The latest being the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, that was a tremendous find that validated a lot of what you see in the modern Bible today. You know, I look at it as a historical document that has proven itself to be accurate and therefore I use it as an authoritative source, you know, but I don't push my beliefs on anybody else. No, as a matter of fact, um, the video I did yesterday about could Jesus survive this modern police state. And of course you got to take out the fact, okay, this is God, right? So, so here's a guy with the power of God and everything else. And he's on the planet. We'll take that away. Could he do what he did today without being killed? And the answer of course is no, he couldn't do it today either. 
you know, although we sit high and mighty as, oh, yes, well, we're this leading authority on civil rights and everything else. Baloney. United States, it's very funny. If you take a look at the prophecy side of the Bible, the United States is actually prophesied in the Bible as uh, the beast with the horns of a lamb, but has a tongue like a dragon, basically saying that we appear to come in peace. We appear to want to spread freedom throughout the world, but our actions and our words, our words and actions speak totally different. And that is exactly what happened. Here we come in the name of freedom and democracy to free all you oppressed people from the ravaging fascist regimes. Yet the reality is we go in, we destroy millions upon millions of people's lives. We transform their countries from operating in some way, shape, or form to being totally devastated and destroyed. And then we leave, if we leave, you know, and when we do leave, who do we leave it to? Oh, the cronies, uh, the war, uh, warlords in the region that will play nice with the Western banking syndicate. That's what happens time and time and time again. We've been a, a part of coups that have happened. How many countless coups? I'm sure probably more so than we even know. And we're not the good guys that they like to portray us to be. You know, that's the truth. Now, you can buy into the bunkum that they try to tell you. Oh, the United States leads the way in humanitarian efforts. Why, look at all the funding that we give to all these countries all over the world. Yeah, we do. But you know what? All that is is a payment to these people to say, hey, stay loyal to us. You stay loyal to us, we'll keep sending you that money. And then these warlords and everybody, they send their tribute back to the Don. You know, the Don, of course, being whoever's in office, whoever was selected to be put in that office. Let's also remember, here in the United States, like leaders across the world, leaders are selected, they're not elected. Okay? I don't think it was the powers that shouldn't be I don't think it was their idea to put Hillary Clinton in there. I think it was totally their idea to have Donald Trump in there. I do. Why? He's one of them. And if anything, this tax break has shown that he's doing exactly what he was put in there to do, to favor the corporations, to favor big business. That's why the corporate tax cuts are permanent. That's why the individual tax cuts are crumbs. Like I say before, they'll throw crumbs at you to get you to buy into things, but they're only crumbs. And in this case, they're not only crumbs, but they're temporary crumbs at that. And meanwhile, you see corporate America with a 14% tax break, which any tax break, if you ask me, is of benefit, is, is a step in the right direction. But where does that money go? A lot of people will come back and say, well, because of that tax break, look at all these corporations giving out these bonuses this year. Okay, <clears throat> those bonuses on the grand scheme of their profits are crumbs. They're throwing crumbs to pigeons. That's all they're doing. At the end of the day, the majority of that money that's saved is going to go to the stakeholders and shareholders of these corporations and to boost the bottom line of companies that may have had lackluster performance over the past 10, 15 years because of a stagnant economy. So you're going to see more growth, but I would challenge to say that it's going to be that significant because the debt level will continue to go up. Now, as this goes on, as this goes on, what's going to happen? Interest rates are going to start to creep up. Servicing the debt is going to get more expensive and more of a portion of that money that goes towards servicing uh, or that we collect in personal income tax and other business taxes, everything else is going to have to go towards servicing that debt, 
which is going to therefore make us have to borrow more money and it's going to inflate that debt even higher. And we're going to, it is a death cycle, a death spiral that we're in that we cannot break out of the way that things are run right now. So folks, brace yourself, brace yourself for what's coming. Brace yourself for more fake news in 2018 and more propaganda. Brace yourself just like you've braced yourself every year since you woke up because it's going to continue to happen. Fake news is going to continue to happen and we'll be right here the whole time, right here at the Daily Sheeple, helping you find your way through the quagmire of poop that litters our information landscape. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe today and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.